More signs of the coronavirus pandemic altering our upcoming holiday shopping plans. Target announced Monday today that it will close on Thanksgiving Day. It said in a blog post, quote, historically, deal hunting and holiday shopping can mean crowded events, and this isn't the year for crowds. No. Instead, Target's holiday shopping deals will begin in October. Closing on Thanksgiving has been a source of tension often between retailers and labor advocates in the past. Well, many big box stores have been opening on the holiday to get that jump start on Black Friday. Well, that's generally considered the start of the year-end shopping rush. So Walmart announced last week it will be closed on Thanksgiving. Wow. Walmart said its workers have really stepped up this year and they should enjoy the holiday with loved ones. That's huge. That is huge and glad to see it, you know, for the folks who want, you know, spend holiday holidays with their family or just with anyone. Here's the thing. I mean, I wonder how they're going to be working Black Friday this year. You were talking about how you know, that, that'll still be a deal. I mean, they're right. still going to be open the next day, and that's when, you know, traditionally it's been the big shopping day. But it's not going to be like first come, first serve anymore. But I think it's really been kind of phasing out in the last few years. It had because of Internet shopping. Right, you know, a lot of people People shopping are online. doing that and not wanting to be in crowds. But before coronavirus, was the flu. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we'll, we'll see what goes on, but it sure wouldn't be a good year to get in a thick crowd. No, not at all. Yeah. You know, but, you know, the thing is, I think with a lot of items, you know, I'm finding that out with shoes. <laughs> 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 I want to try them on first, yeah, you know, and that, there's tough. something to that. The online shopping is wonderful, but there are only so many things I want to do online. There are other things I'm really, sometimes, in feeling the fabric. Yes. You know, feeling that, you know, just sometimes it's just as simple as a t-shirt or just a I've regular. I've gotten burned a couple of times. Yes, I have too. Yeah. You think, oh, this is paper thin, you know, you don't realize it until it comes in and think, well, I already bought it, you know. It costs so. more to ship it back than it did. Oh, yeah, really, no doubt. <laughs> hey, today is National Creme Brulee Day. Yes, it is. Yes. It is. It's a rich custard base topped with caramelized sugar, but most folks know it for its finishing touch. That's the fire. Chefs usually use a small propane torch Do to they? burn the outer layer, thus making it burnt cream. Uh -huh. uh, the first known recipe for creme brulee is believed to have come from a, a cookbook from 1691. Bon appetit, my friends. I love creme brulee. You know, the last time I ate something that was propane torched, it was not good at all. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Joe Bird was in the studio heating up pizza with a propane torch. Well, it could have been operator. And, well, that, <laughs> <laughs> that maybe that's what Joe. it was. I just remember eating that pizza. It was the worst pizza I think I've ever tasted in my life. It, it was heating had it a, up with had a hint of gas that mm. I didn't really care to eat, but at the same time. So that's how they do crumble, mm -hmm. and that's the way they've now always done it. you can also put it under the broiler. I mean, that's what I'm Of thinking. course, obviously, broiler. before propane, in 1691, they didn't have a oh, propane well, they, torch. Oh, well, they that old? You know, okay, it's under yeah. a, a fire. So yeah. either way, it works. It's good. It's good with them. Always the fantastic. Yeah, creme brulee <sighs> coffee is really good, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Philly fan oh, good. isn't you got paying this. attention good. to the fact that there are no fans in the stands. Check, check him out. This is hilarious. During a game yesterday with no real fans, take his time to distract the Marlins pitcher Robert Ducker by he's, giving cardboard cutouts he's high fans fives. high fives. He's high fiving. <laughs> that, that's enthusiasm. No, right wait, wait, it gets even better. Here's, he gets over there. Look, he finds his seat in between the cardboard cutouts. And look at the pitcher. They're, they're playing the game. And he's walking around back there. And he gets up and he says, Hey, hey, fans, let's start the wave. Look at the wave. <laughs> he's got to get up. He's got to try to get them all to go do the wave here. And it, <laughs> That's hilarious. But no, he, well, he's going to stick out a song right here. Watch him do that. Yeah. You know, uh, and the picture's looking right at the dude right there, too. And but, like, watch this. He gets up. He goes. And he, yeah, he keeps sticking out his tongue. All right, I guess maybe this is a different video. But he, he gets up, he tries to get the wave started, and of course nobody's going to do it. But it's like, to me, that's, that would be more distracting as a pitcher oh, than absolutely. having 100 or 200 people behind the plate. You yeah. got the Philly fanatic back there doing that. But he gets up and he, he goes, he tries to, you know, like to do the wave. And he kind of looks people. around like, why, why aren't people doing the wave? Work with me here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Fun time stuff. for your chance to win. Oh, yeah. Two tickets to Holiday World, Splash and Safari, and of course, try out the new coaster, the Cheetah Chase. Be